Halloween. I could go, I could make, probably make this into several parts, but I'm not. I'm going to make it short, but to the point. And either you're going to accept it or you're going to ignore it. A lot of people choose to ignore it. Some people know about it and ignore it. Some people don't know what's going on on Halloween. But we're going to find out tonight what Halloween is. And Halloween has never been a Christian holiday. I say that because it, it started with the Roman Catholics. Not really Halloween, but later it became Halloween. And I'm going to show that. But they, they used to say it was a Christian holiday. Well, it's not. It has no place for in the life of a born-again Christian, a believer in Christ. Like I said, it was the Roman Catholic Church is the ones who started it. They started the All Saints Day. That's what they started which became All Hallows Day. Hollow means holy or scared. All Saints Day holiday was to honor the Christian saints. You know how the Catholics have saints they pray to. Well, this is what this day was for. And it was also for those who, who didn't have a special day devoted to them. It was for all saints. This is what the Catholics did. And the Catholics Feast of All Saints Day was on May 13th. Then the Pope Gregory II assigned it to November the 1st to get the people to quit, to quit the festival called Shalween. This was the biggest and most significant day of the Celtic year. This festival was when they believed the ghosts of the dead were able to mingle with the living and that the souls of those who had died during the year was to travel into another world. San Sean Ween came from the most powerful and most feared Lord. This is this is happening. This all this has happened overseas. It wasn't in America. This this has been going on for a long time, but it was mainly over like in Ireland. People gathered to to sacrifice animals, fruits, vegetables. They also lit bonfires in honor of the dead to help aid them on their journey. And the Pope. Like I said, Pope Gregory II tried to get the people to turn from this horrible observance of this holiday, but it didn't work. Because Hall their, their October 31st was when they had this. So he made All Hallows Day on November 1st, hoping that it would take away from those festivals, but it didn't. During this time, the belief, belief developed that witches traveled to worship Satan on October 31st. They were guided by spirits in the form of black cats. And over time, the night of October 31st came to be called All Hallow Eve. The pagan festival continued to be celebrated and it joined together with All Saints Day to make Halloween. Like I said, it was joined together. The Catholic Church tolerated this. They made it, they said, okay. They said, it, well, we're just, the Catholic leaders said we're just recognizing it's a fun holiday. They said they didn't intend to hold any kind of religion or supernatural beliefs on that day. It was just a holiday. This is what the Catholics said. They accepted Halloween. And Halloween traditions can be traced to the ancient Celtic day of the dead. Halloween is a holiday of many mysterious customs which we're going to see. The Celtics, they were a European group of people which started before Christ. They were here before Christ. They were educated, but they were also barbarians. And they, they started over in Ireland. The Celtics had priests called, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, Durins. They worshiped cats, believing them to be re reincarnated evil people. That's why they worshiped cats. And as we know, there's no such thing as reincarnation. And we, the reason we believe that, because the Hebrews 9, 27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Lord never said we come back to life here on earth as something else. And they would go house to house, demanding certain foods. The Durans were considered evil, worshippers of the devil and the demonic gods and spirits. They date all the way back to about 200 BC. Now, this has been going on a while, but it was all over there in Europe. The high priests and priestesses 
These were magicians, smoothsayers, wizards, filled with the most important role of the Celtic culture. At the time, the Celtic tribes were close to nature. They were so close to nature, they started worshiping nature itself. Now, those who practice fortune telling, Ouija boards, calling up the spirits from the dead, people who have seance, found this night that this was the most successful night to do these things. And you, I know you know people who do this. I mean, they think it's a game, the Ouija board. They think it's a game of calling up the dead. It's real and it's not a game. On October, no, on November 2nd, 1985, in the Dallas Times Herald, there was a story written in the paper about Mary King, a Dallas physicist. Had, she had a seance on Halloween. She contacted 15 spirits, including the long life, <clears throat> including the longtime story of Lady of the Lake, who she spoke to. This was a big thing on that night. The newspaper was there, the radio station was there, even TV reporters were there. She got in, talk, in, in contact with them. And like I said, and this is for real. We're going to see through this lesson, it can be done. The wearing of costumes, for instance, roaming from door to door demanding treats can be tracked to the Celtics period and the first few centuries of the Christian era when it was thought that the souls of the dead were out and around along with fairies, witches, and demons. As the centuries wore on, people began dressing like these dreadful creatures. The whole theme was, represent, was to represent darkness, death, and fear, performing tricks in exchange for food and drink. This was trick or treat. But the, where they got it from, like I said a while ago, those demon worshippers and stuff, they would do this. This is what they had to do. I mean, there they wasn't a, a holiday to them. This is things they did. This practice is called mummering, which means masquerade. As we know, masquerade, costumes, putting on a different face, from which the practice of trick or treat evolved. To this day, witches, ghosts, and skeleton figures of the dead are among the favorite costumes, and we know that. They love to wear these kind of costumes. Why? Because it came from over there, and what was in Europe came over here. And they just followed it. Believe it or not, believe it or not, there will be sacrifices of dogs, cats, rats, chickens, goats, and humans on this night. Some years back we had the chief of police come to our church. The chief of police came to our church and revealed things that went on that night. And they would find, they would find burnt circles with a human body in the middle. You know, these people that always come up missing, you always got people coming up missing. Well, especially on this night, this is what happens. Well, and it's, a, it's, not only, it's not just babies or kids, it's adults also. I was working for Coastal Spray at the time, working inside the refinery. In fact, I was working right there at FINA Refinery, spraying the tank, uh, tank bottom where the tanks are. And I saw for myself, with my own eyes, a circle that had been burnt with a rabbit in the middle of it, burnt. Someone was worshiping that night. Like I said, they worship, they, they sacrifice rabbits, you know, chickens. Well, I saw from my own eyes a burnt spot, a circle with a rabbit in the middle, burnt. So this is going on, this is for real. I mean, I, I am a witness of that myself. So like I said, believe it or not, it's going on. On this night, the high priest of all witches, <coughs> covens, are required to make human sacrifices. The head of the first satanic church, and there is a ch satanic church, said, a witch is a witch, and all their power comes from the devil. This is what this satanic priest, or whatever you want to call him, this is what he said. They believe that. They believe that. A lot of people don't want to believe this. Everything I'm saying right now, people don't want to believe that. Oh, that's... No, it's going on. It started a long time ago. It started before Christ, and it, it just it never died out. It's still here today. It's in America. It was just over there, but now it's over here. You have most people who don't take this seriously. 
And like I said, they don't want to believe this goes on. Let me tell you this. The devil takes it very seriously. It's his night. And you know who takes it very seriously? God. Our Lord takes this very serious. And we're going to find out through the scriptures after all why, what he says about these things. It's an abomination to God. And we should take a firm stand on Halloween on that night. Christians should. As we look at history, we find that the roots go deep into heathenism, paganism, Satanism, and the occult. Like I said, I could have made a whole teaching on everything that I just told you now. I could have, I've done, I, there was, it's a lot deeper than that. But I want to, I really want us to see what does the Lord say about Halloween. He doesn't call Halloween, Halloween. But he definitely has scriptures that say, that talks about darkness and evil. And that's what Halloween is. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, and I will also forget thy children. Like I said, Christians don't want to know the truth. Their lack of knowledge. They, they don't want to know the truth. They're scared of it for one thing. And since we don't want his truth, we can't be his royal priesthood. If we don't want to know all of God's truth, then we can't be his royal priesthood because in 1 Peter 2, 9, the Lord says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. He has called us out of darkness. Now, there's no way people can argue that Halloween doesn't represent darkness. And right here, the Lord says, I have called you out of that. This is the scriptures. He's saying, since we don't want to know, we will lose the blessing, the rewards for doing acts of darkness. We will lose blessings and rewards. And our children will lose out on the blessings also. And that's a teaching in itself where, you know, if parents are living a godly life, your children, our children are going to be blessed also. But if we're not, if the parents aren't, then the children are going to lose out also. But I'm not going to go into that. Preachers and teachers should be letting us know right from wrong. This is what they should be doing. What I'm doing tonight, preachers should preach this in the church. But it's not happening. Ezekiel 44, 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane. And cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. So we should be, we should be being taught this. But what church are you going to go into where they're, they're teaching what I'm teaching tonight? They don't want to scare the people. We need more men of God in the church to show us these things. Part of the people don't know because their, their pastor is not revealing it to them. And that's wrong. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 through 14. Now I'm reading all, a lot of these out of the Living Bible because I want to make sure we understand what he's saying. So I'm reading them out of the Living Bible. Verse 9. When you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, be very careful not to intimidate the testament custom of the nations living there. For example, never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering, and do not let your people practice fortune telling or use sorcery or interpret omens or engage in witchcraft or cast spells or functions as mediums or uh, psychics or call forth the spirits of the dead. Anyone who does these things is, a te is detestable to the Lord. It is because the other nations have done these detestable things that the Lord your God will drive them out ahead of you. But you must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you are about to displace consult sorceries and fortune telling but the Lord your God forbids you to do such things. God forbids us to even participate in anything like this. The Canaanites, they believed and lived this way. This, is, this, this story is talking about the Canaanites, but that's for all of us. 
God didn't want his people Israel to get involved with those things that the Canaanites, Canaanites were doing. He wanted them to stay away from these practices and to be blameless. Now if he's telling Israel, which was his people, to stay away from it, we as Christians, we are his people. And he's telling us the same thing. Stay away from sorcery, witchcraft. He's saying stay away from it. The devil is very tricky. He starts with good witches, like the Wizard of Oz. They had a good witch in there. Sabrina, I think it's Sabrina, the teenage witch. She was a witch, but she was a good witch. And that's how the devil gets started. Making it look nice and funny and sweet. Ah. The devil is very deceitful and he's very tricky. And that's the way he's getting the kids. He starts them off with that. And believe it or not, it will, it will grow from there. We need to be very watch, watchful over our kids. 2 Corinthians 6, 4, 14. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with the unbeliever. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? What communion do we have with darkness? If we're living in the light, if we're born again Christians, we're living in the light, right? Mm -hmm. So what communion do we have with darkness? These, are pretty, these verses are pretty, they're easy to understand. Very easy to understand. People are reading them, but they're just passing them. They're not, they're not really, they're not getting what the Lord is trying to say. A lot of people, they read through the Bible. Or they read through these books, whatever, this book this month, this book that month. They read stuff like this, but that's all they're doing is reading. They're not taking in what God is trying to say to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 19 through 22. What say I then? Am I saying that food offered to idols has some real meaning? Or that idols are real gods? No, not at all. I'm saying that these sacrifices are often offered to demons, not to God. And I don't want you to participate with demons. You cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and from the cup of demons too. You cannot he eat at the Lord's table and the table of demons too. I think the Lord's pretty simple, right? I mean, it's pretty plainly right here. This is what, this is really, this is what's happening on Halloween. Christians are doing exactly what God said not to do here. Don't put blinders on and just look at the kids. They're having fun. That the kids are having fun. That's Halloween. They're celebrating Halloween. Because you're just fooling yourselves when you say, Oh, it was just Halloween. They're having fun. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. Well, you don't want to take Halloween away from the kids. They No, we should. I respect and honor the Amish people. The honest people have separated themselves from the world. Like the Lord says, we're no longer of the world, which I'm going to get to that. But they don't celebrate Halloween. Right. But we, we seem to okay it. You know, 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Halloween just doesn't appear evil. It is evil. It is totally darkness. And what's the Lord say right here? He said to abstain from it, to stay away from it. Philippians 4.88 And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. This is exactly what Halloween isn't. It is in, in no way praising the Lord giving thanks to the Lord. And this is what we're supposed to do with our life. We should be always giving thanks to the Lord, praising Him. Well, there ain't nobody praising God on, on Halloween night. Ephesians 5, verses 7 through 13. Don't part participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, once, we were once full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Take no part. 
The Lord said, take no part in it. Instead, expose them. Is that what we're doing? Is that what the Lord's giving me to do tonight? Expose them? He's, it's in His Word. He said to expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that are ungodly people do in secret. The Lord says, we, He's talking to Christians, we should take no part in this. Instead, we should expose it for what it is. Do you see churches doing that? Like I said, I'm just giving you the words of God now right. to talk about darkness. Uh, it doesn't say Halloween, but what is Halloween? It's wickedness, evil, and darkness. And this is what the Lord has to say about it. People think it's funny to scare people to death. I mean, that's they have these houses and where they sometimes they charge for you to even go through them. But they're what they want to do is scare you to death. That's what they want to do. Second. Second Timothy 1 7 for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so are we supposed to be scaring people who wants to scare people the darkness the demons I mean that's what they want to do scare people and God said I have not given you the spirit of fear the Lord tells us in James 1 27 Part of being a true Christian is taking care of widows and orphans and not to be corrupt by the world. He said, don't be corrupt by the world. The world is the lost people, right? That's the world. He said, not to be corrupt by them. But we're following right in their footsteps. The Bible clearly teaches that there are two classes of spirit. Now listen. There's good and evil spirits. Revelations chapter 12, 7 through 9. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and, and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the, into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now we know about that, right? We know that Satan and, and some of the angels rebelled against God, and he cast them out of heaven. The chief of the fallen angels is an archangel, and he has many names in the Bible. As we see here, he's called the great dragon. We just seen right here, he's called the great, we're talking about the devil. Revelations 12.10, he's called the accuser of the brethren. He loves to accuse us, accuse us of things to bring us down. Revelations 22, he is called that old serpent. Matthew 9.34, he's called the prince of the devils. John 12.31, he's called prince of this world. These are all names for the devil. The two most powerful names are, is in Ephesians 2.2, 2, the prince of of the power of the air. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, The God of this world. Also in 2 Corinthians 6.15 He's called Belial. If I'm still pronouncing that right, right. Which means the wicked. Now these are all his names. Now to the lost people that's what he is. He is prince of this world. He is God of this world. Because if, 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 if people are not living for Jehovah God. Then they're living for because you you can't you don't there's only two choices mm -hmm. live for God our Father in heaven or live for this God that's called the Prince of God and I mean the Prince of the world the Prince of the air which just means spiritual he's got that power he's down here God gave him that power allowed him to have that power so he's here and he's for real because they were down here temporarily. They're only down here temporarily. That is, it says in Ephesians 6.12. Now listen. I know people have read this a lot of times. Ephesians 6.12. It tells us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against people. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. That's who we're wrestling against. That's who we need to go up against. When you read Ephesians 6.12, this is a spiritual verse. 
There's evil spirits, spirits, against spiritual weaknesses in high places. Ephesians 6 12. It plainly says it. We fight against a spirit world. This is true. You got a lot, and we're talking about Christians here. They don't they don't see that. They don't see that they're fighting against a spirit world. They think, okay, as long as I don't lie, steal, stuff like that, they're being good Christians. They don't have the signs ideal that they're fighting against a spirit world. And because they don't know it, guess what? It's going to overtake them. Because they, know, they don't know how to fight against it. They don't even know about it. It also says in Galatians 1.16, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, he, all things were created by Him and for Him. Even though God created these leaders, evil leaders, He also says in Colossians 1, verses 19 through 21, it says in, it says in verses 19, through 20, 19 and 20 that God gave Jesus this power when He raised from the dead, from the grave, when Jesus raised from the grave, to be seated, seated on the right hand of God in heavenly places. God gave Jesus this power. In Ephesians 1, verse 21, Jesus was given four above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Now, if you're living a, a Christian life, walking with the Lord, with Jesus living in you, you don't have to worry about these devils. Amen? Amen. We don't, if you're a born-again Christian, you don't have to worry about this spirit world. Because the spirit cannot be in the same place where the Holy Spirit is. The evil spirit cannot be in the same place where the good spirit is, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. It can't overtake the Holy Spirit, which we have. If the Holy Spirit is in us, there's no way a spirit can, can come and possess us. Praise God. Amen. Once, once you realize there is a spirit world, you better get on your knees and, and thank the Lord. Say, thank you, Jesus, for putting the Holy Spirit in me. Just remember that these, that there's many good angels. There's many good angels. Luke 9, 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. And when he shall come in his glory, own glory and his father and the holy angels are going to come also there's a lot of holy angels hebrews 12 22 but ye are come unto mount zion and unto the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem and to a new innumerable company of angels there's a lot of good angels out there a lot let me show you what one angel can do Right here there says there's many. But let me show you what one angel can do. 2 Kings 19.35 It says, That night the angel of the Lord went out of Assyria camp and killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. When, they, when the surviving Assyrians woke up the next morning, they found corpses everywhere. One angel. One angel defeated 185,000 soldiers. One angel. And we see the verse above said there's numeral, innumerable angels. So praise God, we're on the right team. Really? <laughs> Amen. We're on the right team. If one angel can do that, and by the way, that angel was Jesus. Whenever, uh, that's another teaching, but whenever you read the Bible and it says the angel of the Lord is talking about Jesus and that's who our king is that's who our angel is that's who our God is and these angels are here to minister to us Hebrews chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 but to which of the angels said he at any time this is did he tell any, any angel God sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So they are to minister to us because we're the heirs of salvation. Right. Amen? Amen? So 
So these angels are to minister to us. You'd be surprised. You've probably had angels ministering to you and you didn't even know it. I'm serious about that. Amen? Amen? As we know, some of these fallen angels that we talked about earlier, God didn't send them to this world. He said He sent them to the world. But some angels He sent to the bottomless pit. Second Peter 2 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, talking about the fallen angels, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So this is not judgment day. Judgment day is when the, when the devil and the angels, the demons, go, are put into hell fire. But this is before then. He's reserving these, angel, these fallen angels for that time, but he's reserving them in a place called hell, which is the bottomless pit. So these devil, these devil, I mean, these fallen angels were so bad, God said, uh-uh. I'm not even letting you on earth. I'm putting you down in a pit and chain you up until the day of judgment. That's what he's saying. Jude 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitations, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. All I can say is that these demons are beyond wicked. Because the Lord couldn't even let them be around us. They're so bad that even in the pit, they had to be chained. Even in the pit, he had to chain them. Whoa. The Lord told us these things were going to happen. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is Halloween. This one verse, listen to it. There's going to be those who will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. That's what's happening. They're going to fall to the doctrines of the devil. This is Halloween. Romans 12, 2. The Lord says, And be not conformed to this world. He said, Don't be conformed to this world. Whatever this world's doing, don't do what they're doing. Don't be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Are we, are we conforming to the world? I mean, the world, there is, it's not no surprise that the world celebrating Halloween, celebrating darkness, because they live in darkness. They don't have the light. So that is the world. Now, are we conforming to them? We shouldn't be, but we are. Christians are celebrating Halloween. Christians. Pressure on children from school and friends have always been a problem. This is why the Lord says in Proverbs, Proverbs 22, 6, the Lord says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So if you're letting your kids celebrate Halloween, are you training them in the way they should go? No. The way they should go is by God's way. The light. But if you're letting them celebrate darkness, are you training them in the way they should go? God said right here, He said train them in the way they should go. And when they grow, they won't depart from it. Are parents paying attention to this verse? They're not if they're letting their kids celebrate Halloween. That's not training them the right, the right way. We're not in this world. We, we have Christians who want to be. 1 John 3.13 The Lord says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Why is the world going to hate us? Because we represent the light, the Lord. What's the world living by? The world is living by darkness. So they're going to hate us because they don't want light shown on their darkness. Right. You hear me? John 17 verses 14 through 16 I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Talking about Christians. Because they are not of the world. We are not of the world. When are Christians going to get that through their head? We are no longer of the world. The Lord says, Even as I am not of the world. I pray not thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest, shouldest keep them from the evil. 
They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. How much plainer can you get? Really? The Lord is telling us, we're no, the Lord is plainly telling us, hey, you're not of the world. Why are you doing worldly things? He says it twice. Twice, <laughs> yes. James fifteen nineteen. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. How many verses do we need to show that the world's going to hate us? If the world doesn't hate us, I think we better check ourselves out. I'm serious. Do, do we, are, are we reading the verses? If we're living in the light, a Christian godly life, the world will hate us. If the world doesn't hate us, if we're accepted by the world, you better put a big question mark in your mind and say, am I walking with the Lord? Am I a Christian? And I'm very serious about that. Galatians 6.14 But God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is, the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. The Lord said, we're dead to the world. Hello? God said, we're dead to the world. Are Christians showing that? Or are they just showing that? If you're celebrating Halloween, you are not dead to the world. Hebrews 11:13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Talking about the born-again Christians in the Old Testament. That's what it's talking about. It says they confessed that they were strangers, pilgrims in this world. They were, they were saying, hey, we're not of this world anymore. We're strangers here. Do you feel like you're a stranger in this world or do you feel like you're a part of it? Quite ask yourself that. These are some serious, serious scriptures that we need to understand. And you need to ask yourself, is that me? I'm serious about that. First Peter chapter 2 verses 9 through 11. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, meaning we're different, that ye sh should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which I've read that already. Verse 10, which in time past was not a people, but are now the people of God, which hath not ob obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Verse 11, Dear be dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. If y'all if y'all have never read these scriptures, you got them now. The Lord has shown you. The Lord has opened your eyes to what he thinks about darkness and the way we should feel about darkness because darkness hates us. And it doesn't mean that we're going to hate darkness. We pray for them. But we don't do the things they do. We show them love, but not in fellowship. We show them love by praying for them. That's what we're supposed to do. Second Corinthians six seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them. What did the Lord say? Come out. He says, Come out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, our, and I will receive you. And these verses that I've read tonight, there's no if, ands, or buts about them. The Lord has said it plainly, yeah. without a doubt. We're not of this world. We have nothing to do with darkness. Nothing. We must be careful what we put into our minds through the media, games, the internet. It's it can be those, you know, they got games that are okay to play. Internet, there's good stuff on the internet, but there's a lot of bad stuff on the internet, and there's a lot of bad games. We need to stay away from it. We need to stay away from it. It's not a game when it represents darkness. It's not a game alone. It's real. To participate in Halloween is to dishonor the Lord. Through this teaching, through, this, through the scriptures I've read to you, if you celebrate Halloween, you are dishonoring your Lord. Bottom line. There's no way for ands or buts there. No matter what you think about Halloween, it's the most highest satanic holy day. 
That's what Halloween is. Hollow, Halloween represents darkness, black colors, evil spirits, people rising from the dead, roaming the earth on this night. That's what they do. This is Halloween. We not we need listen to me. We need to stop being worldly Christians. You have a lot of Christians that are still worldly. And we need to stop. We need to quit observing Halloween. Especially in church. Especially in church. I hope y'all hearing me. Even though kids dress up as Bible characters. Or fall harvest they dress up like farmers or whatever. They're still celebrating Halloween. If you, if you want to do that. If we want to do that let's do it on another night. Just do it on another night if we want to celebrate fall harvest or celebrate God's creatures or characters of the Lord. Do it on another night. But we're celebrating Halloween just like darkness is celebrating Halloween. We are celebrating. Bottom line is we're celebrating the holiday. In a different way, but we're still celebrating it. Right. It's like a duck. No matter what you do to a duck, no matter how you dress it, it's still a duck. Mm -hmm. So Halloween is still Halloween. I don't care how you celebrate it, God's creatures or whatever, it's still Halloween. You're still celebrating Halloween. Don't even open the doors to pass out tracks. Christians, they pass out tracks. Don't even do that. That's still participating in Halloween. You got, what, there's 365 days in the, in the year? What, you have 364 days to pass out tracks. <laughs> you hear me? The level of toler tolerance among Christians in America are becoming very bad, very tragic. We are. I have a, a teaching on seduction of the church, and you'll find a lot of that in there. But the church is falling quickly. Churches are just like, a, like I always said before, churches are about 10 years behind the world. First the world accepts it, and then about, give it about 10 years, the church will start accepting it. Now I don't say this so people will stop going to church. We need to go to church. The Lord says not to forsake the assembling of believers. We need to be around other Christians because it helps, it helps us to be around other Christians, people like us. That helps us. So we need to be in church, but we got to be careful. Watch what church you go to. There are some churches out there that are true churches. They are not falling to all this stuff. There's not many, but there are some. Halloween has always been, and it's still today, the devil's holiday. Period. That's it. It's the devil's holiday. Celebrated by pagans. And we're right there with them. Now after this teaching, do you see anything wrong with that? After what you've heard from the scriptures, what God has said, are you wondering... Should I celebrate at the church? Should I go to the church and go ahead and, and pass out candy just like the lost people are doing, the pagans are doing? Because that's what, the, in the old times, what I say earlier, the devil worshippers, they would go out, the Celtics, they would go out and expecting food. Well, we just followed it with candy to make it look okay. But there's no difference from what they did back then. Can you see that there's more to being a Christian than just saying, I believe in God. There's more to being a Christian than just saying, I believe in God. Believing in God, you stay away from worldly things. We have no business in the darkness. God says not to be unequally yoked. What does the light have to do with darkness? And like I say again, this is the one, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of pastors that are not going to like what I've taught tonight. Because I'm telling them, hey, churches, we don't need to celebrate Halloween. But to them, that's their way of reaching out to the kids. Right. Well, the kids, what are, you, what are you teaching the kids? Celebrate Halloween. That's what they're teaching them. It might be in a different costume, but they're still celebrating Halloween. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, <sighs> thank you so much for opening our eyes to Halloween. Just like the devil has taken Christmas away from the birth of Christ. He's taken Halloween, his day, his evil day, and made it to a fun day for kids. 
He is so deceitful. He is so wicked. The lost people follow him. Christians, they do it and don't even know it. But Lord, you have teachers and preachers, I hope, that are teaching this. Not just me tonight, but I hope you have preachers and teachers out there who are teaching this. That this is not a Christian holiday and we should not recognize it in no way. And if we do, Father, for those who do, Father God, uh, open their eyes. Open their eyes, Lord. Thank you for opening our eyes. And thank you for this time that you've given us that we can get together and hear your words. Hear your words, Father. They're blessings to us. And we need them. Thank you, Lord. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.